Today's video is going to teach us not only about winning the fight, but setting ourselves up to win the fight after the fight. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Mount Vernon, New York. LuckyGunner.com works hard to stock ammo to ship today and take care of their customers. They've stood by us all in this ammo crisis and earned my business time and time again. They ship immediately, often same day, so give them your next ammo order. One of our actors is this guy right here, and there is a significant backstory to this that you need to understand. I've linked a bunch of news stories in the description for you. So, it come to find out, this guy here, one of his co-workers, has a restraining order or some orders of protection, several police reports at any rate, from the guy who's about to come from off camera. They work together, but this guy has threatened his sister, they might have had a relationship before, something like that. There's, there's police cases and stuff like that. So, now they have a beef, right? Significant beef. So now you're gonna watch our dude as he's walking down the street. He sees this other guy and that other guy is approaching him with a knife. So our dude pulls his own knife. You see him open his knife here and now they're gonna legit have a knife fight. You're gonna see these guys here where our aggressor comes at him and makes the first slash. Defender gets him and slashes him in the face with the second one and now they tie up. And as they tie up, our, our guy in the red pants here who was the one who first came with the knife is going to get stabbed several times. Now they're gonna separate here and, and get away from each other. The dude in the red pants is going to ride off. Now, he died a little ways down the road and our other guy has been charged with murder in his death. And that is very significant. We're gonna talk about whether or not his actions were justified in the lessons. Man, this is absolutely serious stuff. And if you want deep dives every week on legal and moral self-defense, we do that over on our second channel, Active Self Protection Extra. We have expert attorneys in every week to talk about issues like we're gonna talk about in today's lesson. So of course, the first thing we gotta talk about here is we gotta talk about being a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person. Not getting into these kind of fights again, not getting into these kind of stalking situations where there's orders of protection and those kinds of things. I do think, again, avoiding these is, is your best bet, but sometimes you can't and these, this guy is stalking or whatever the case is. It still means at all times, you have to be a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person. I do think here this is a video has some arguments for number one, carrying a firearm, number two, having a less lethal on you like an OC spray, and I'm gonna talk about why. So you see him pulling down on each other here, and he sees this guy, and he's gonna get his own knife open here. But, but listen, he knows this guy in the red pants is coming with a knife. You don't tactically, you don't wanna close in on a guy with a knife, you wanna stay away from him. Which is why a far better lethal tool to, to carry around is a firearm because you have distance here if at all possible. Now, of course, it's New York State, so getting a pistol permit, getting a carry permit, almost impossible, very, very difficult. I think that is wrong and I think that that needs to be adjusted so that good people can defend themselves. But again, you're, you're now saying, wait a minute, I'm gonna open this knife and dive in on this guy. And, and where he's gonna have problems here is because in New York State you have a, a duty to retreat. So did he have to get engaged here or could he have run off? Did he have the ability to retreat safely? I think at this point he did. So that's gonna be a problem for him in his defense. Now then, once the fight is closed, now he doesn't have the right, the ability to, to withdraw because the guy is going to be able to chase him. So now that has removed itself. But now let's think about this from a tactical perspective. You've got a small knife in your hand and this guy's coming at you. So this is actually a reason that I would say, even if you're gonna carry a lethal tool, have something like a, an OC spray on you because it gives me a little bit of distance to hose this guy with the hot sauce and to diminish him if we end up in a fight. So that at least gets him where he can't see, where he's in pain, where things are there, so that I can either get away or more effectively defend myself. So in this kind of situation, when I've got some time ahead of time, getting my OC spray out, spraying this guy down, blessing the deserving with the hot sauce, and maybe preventing the entire fight or at least putting myself at an advantage is a good idea. It's one of the reasons that I carry it. Now, we see here the initial attack is guy in red pants. That's why I definitely say that I, I think he's the aggressor. He's the one that walked all this down and those things. So from that perspective, he has definitely initiated the aggression and this is definitely a deadly force incident. Somebody slashing at you with a knife is absolutely a threat of death or great bodily harm to you and to yours. So in this moment, do I have any problems with him using deadly force to protect himself? No, and I don't think any reasonable person would as well. And that's exactly what we see here is he is gonna come back and, and make that same kind of slash but now we start to talk about this issue of chasing. Now, again, this is somewhat a predator drive thing. You know, when the, the bad guy starts to get away, oh no, you're not getting away from me that easy. 
but recognize that we're going to ask a question here. Is this guy retreating or is he trying instead to gain a position of advantage from which he can continue his attack? That's going to be what the jury's going to look at 100% in this particular case. And it's not a cut and dried issue, friends. So I do want to tell you that, that if you chase somebody here, you might say, well, I think that he was you know, still engaged and we never got disengaged. So I had to continue to fight with him and those kinds of things. But recognize that it's going to cost you years and years of trials, perhaps. It's going to cost you tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in lawyer's fees, missed work, sleepless nights, all those things, which is one of the big reasons I say, don't chase fleeing felons. Take the win. You got the guy off you and you, and, and you got him to go away. Good. Keep that up. Now, let's think from a tactical perspective here as well, because this knife fight here that closes to a grappling distance, very dangerous, and it is first a fight. So having some empty handed skills, just because you got a tool, whether it's a firearm, whether it's a knife, OC spray, whatever, is not by itself a, a, a complete foolproof defending tool, right? You gotta be able to keep it. So you notice here, that guy has his hand on that arm with the knife, he's trying to ward that off as well. And remember, you have more than the knife at hand. What I see people do all the time when they have a tool in their hand is they forget everything else. They simply think, oh no, I've just gotta use the tool in my hand rather than say, man, I've got more hands, more feet, I've got all kinds of more weapons on me and my natural weapons in order to use them. Now, they got a part here. Good, so this second time, when they get apart, our, our dude in the blue pants lets him go, and that's the right choice. I wish he had done it the first time. Had he done it the first time, he wouldn't be facing any charges whatsoever. This time, I think he does a better job here of letting the guy go in that moment. And, and again, I'm not saying that the guy in the red pants was a good dude. I think he probably wasn't a good dude. I think there, there's evidence there that maybe he was a, you know, a pretty significant dirtbag. But bottom line is you have to be the good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person and not chase. He didn't chase this second time. I think that was the right decision. Also want us to notice that somebody can be absolutely mortally wounded and still they can present themselves as a threat, be on their feet for a number of moments. So don't expect somebody who is mortally wounded to just go down. Finally, I do think we should practice spiritual fitness every day. And spiritual fitness in the, the beginning of this, in the first part means as a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person that we don't get into fights like this, that we don't stalk and harass people, that we only have consensual relationships. Then also it means that we say everything we need to say to our loved ones every day and we make sure that our relationship with Jesus is strong, which should hopefully keep us from these kinds of incidents rather than get us to the place where we end up meeting him on that day. Let's practice that as part of making sure that we cover our ASP.